Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Ed Guiney and Andrew Lowe, producers on Four Things from director Yoros Lanthimos and starring Emma Stone. Listen, I know this was a feat to get made on so many levels. So you two have both worked with Yogos before. Could you talk briefly about sort of how that relationship has evolved over the years and when you first started to hear the rumblings of, of Poor Things? Maybe, Ed, we'll start with you. Um, well, it was sort of, I think, soon after The Lobster uh, that he he mentioned, maybe we were in post, I can't remember specifically, but when he mentioned that he'd, he had been in touch with Alistair Gray and loved this novel and wanted to make a film out of poor things. And, um, you know, we, at that stage, we were, you know, so, you know, having made a film with him and, you know, having seen all of his Greek work were just very committed to him as a filmmaker and the film Poor Things, the, the book sounded extraordinary. Um, and so without really knowing how we would pull it off, we signed up, um, you know, to to try and think about getting it made and took it to film four at that point who, who have been involved in all of Yorgos's films with us. Um, and uh, they, you know, very helpfully agreed to pay for the development. And it really just, you know, it evolved over the years and it was really, um, you know, after we made The Favourite and that had kind of, you know, made an impact and and uh, when Emma uh, signed up both as actor and producer, um, that that sort of, it, it sort of felt possible to make poor things. So we kind of, um, I mean, a bit like, you know, Bella Baxter, we took a lot of baby steps um, to self-actualize. And the script was clearly one of the most important things, getting it adapted from that novel and, and, and getting it sort of shifted into her perspective. You know, what was the most important thing and in, in find or painstaking thing in finding the right person for this job and and Tony uh, McNamara? We, we, we were already fortunate enough to be in business with Tony. So. As I described, uh, you know, the first film we made with uh, Yorgos was The Lobster, but we actually had sort of, when we first met Yorgos, the, the first project we attached him to was The Favourite. Um, but we spent several years developing that and, and we eventually, we were uh, looking out for a new writer um, and really looked everywhere, um, US, UK and Australia. And we found Tony uh, to to uh, take on The Favourite. So um, it just felt like a very natural choice it was is Jorgis's decision ultimately obviously but um so you know he um Tony sort of turned his hand to the adaptation once the favor was kind of up and running and uh um yeah the, so so it was kind of it was quite a straightforward decision really from that point of view and uh, from what I understand Jorgos goes into most films sort of not planning to have certain actors or actresses in mind. Well, while he's at least in pre-production um, before casting really starts, but Emma was attached very early in this. You just, you, um, you discussed while they were making the favorite, they talked about that. And then she eventually came on as a producer. So what was it like not having, having her just as the star of this film, but getting involved as a producer? I mean, she, she, um, she and Yorgos, I think, first spoke about it just after we finished the favors, and I, I, I think he was just, I don't know whether he was pitching it to her or just telling her what he was up to, but either way, she completely responded to the idea of poor things and signed up to become involved in it at that point, and then I think read the script a little while later. But Emma is just all in, um, in in every possible way, and. I think was so curious about all aspects of um the film, you know, obviously the script and 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 Bella's character, et cetera, but then just how we were gonna go about it. And it's certainly the most complicated film we've all made together with Yorgos. And um she just just her curiosity and her uh, ideas just sort of just made sense to 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 involve her in in the production as a producer. And um, you know, she and Yorgos talked a lot about casting and also I think in a way, the pandemic kind of also deepened that kind of conversation because obviously there was a lot of time to talk and, you know, there were a lot of a lot of time for them to talk about the character of Bella and, 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 and fashioning her, but also a lot of time for everyone to talk about the film and how we would go about it. And it took a long time to figure out how to make it. And, you know, there was a lot of um, 
you know, a lot of different options in terms of where we would do it, et cetera. And it was also the first time that we'd ever built, you know, yoga had ever gone on the sound stage. Um, you know, everything to date has been um locations. So um that was a big kind of exercise as well. And and the kind of the work that James and Shona, our designer, did in terms of the kind of concepting and all of that stuff just all happened, you know, during that time. Um so it, it it was a film that really benefited from a lot of conversation and and really benefited from her input, um obviously as Bella but also as a producer, and just as an actress. I mean, Andrew, just what was it like for you to to know of this character and then see someone become this? Because we don't see this. I mean, she she's a child in a in a full grown woman's body. I mean, it's a it's a fantastical story. What was that like? Just to kind of see her take on that role in the way she it's for me it's her best performance ever and that's a high compliment considering her career yeah well i think you know that's that's um you know to what ed was talking about all that time was uh really well spent during during COVID, and that's precisely the sort of work that she and yorgos were doing together sort of breaking down the character and the timeline and trying to figure her mental development her physical development um but it's extraordinary to see, really. I mean, it's, you know, and, and also when you consider we didn't actually shoot the film in sequence. I mean, we 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 tried to, it was Yorgos's ambition was to do that as much as possible, but but we could not all of it shot in sequence. So it's um it's really an, an incredible experience um watching that for the first time, uh, particularly on screen, actually. You know, it's one thing to kind of see bits of it on a on a day-to-day basis, but when you actually just see it um play together like that it is uh, incredible um but it you know it's it's the thing that Yorgos and Tony we all did but Yorgos and Tony responded to particularly in the book is uh you know Bella's story told from her perspective so it's it's the story of Bella's told from all these very different men's perspective and then from hers and um and that's the story that Emma has just taken uh, ownership of and just animates in such an extraordinary way and in such a charming and fascinating way. Um, so, yeah, no, privileged to see that performance. Up close. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear from each of you as as producers, you know, what is what gives you the most anxiety uh, in going into a project like this, which is so huge. I mean, you're filming in Budapest. These Sets are built on huge stages. Um, I was able to speak with with the set designers and they were describing how, you know, so much was built from scratch and, and you're building these different cities and landscapes. Um, and just all of the technical aspects, the costumes, I mean, the cinematography, the music. What what keeps you up at night throughout this process the most? I don't know. I mean, in a way, you sort of like, I think if you... I mean, I think it is a little bit one foot in front of the other. You know, it is a little bit kind of baby steps, and and um, you know, and it, it was a really challenging thing to do. But we, you know, we have a great bunch of people. Like the, you know, the the, the obviously you, you met James and Shona, but the you know the, all the heads of department, but also Kasia Malapan, our line producer, and and Paul Heffernan, who works with us, uh, head of our, our head of production at Element. You know, there's just a lot of um, thought and 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 um and care that goes into thinking about it and of course you know with something like this it is it is difficult you know there, and it is super challenging but there is a kind of there's a really coherent kind of um team i think all sort of all challenge we're all challenged and stretched by it but all kind of um you know all working together so it was, it was a really rewarding experience um and I mean, you know, in a way, like for me, almost always the most stressful time is when it sort of first goes out in front front of an audience when it's first seen, you know, um, by, you know, you know, by the people it's intended for. That's always the most um, kind of anxious making part of it, I guess. But um, but we've yeah, we've got over that. So um, we're at the other side of that. So, I mean, I think I think, the other, you know, you, you sort of I think producing films are a little bit like childbirth you tend to forget the painful bits once you uh your your baby is born but uh, um but actually looking back uh i think one of the really stressful things was just managing COVID. actually because this was 
far and away the most ambitious film uh, we'd ever been involved in as a company and as big a film Yorgos had done. So for all of us, it was really a, it was it was a new new experience. And it's it's actually amazing when you, looking back at you know when you look at all particularly all the crafts work that's this the standard of work that they all did. They all did that during COVID. Everyone was wearing masks. We were dealing with you know lockdowns with having to quarantine when you arrived in Budapest. It was really challenging and. Um, <laughs> And you've no sense of that when you see the film. Obviously, you know why would you? But it's it's, a, it's such a joyful film. But actually, it was <laughs> the environment was tough for, for for that reason. And I think in in you know we were really lucky and having such you know great production partners of film for and searchlight and and they were very supportive and um you know willingly gave us extra resources to manage that because it was an expensive thing to to contend with. And a lot of jobs in Budapest. I mean, from what I understand, there was a lot of <laughs> a lot of the workforce, especially construction workers working on that set. I think they said something like three quarters of of all the construction set design workforce was working on four things at one point. Yeah, and it was it was I mean, we we had I mean, there's four major sets and then there are some you know, there are some smaller ones, but it was, yeah, it was, it was big. I mean, the, the, the Lisbon set was built on uh, Corda, uh, which is the, the, which is the largest sound stage in continental Europe. And it, it took up a lot of that space. So it was, it was, it was a beast for sure. And we talked about Emma, but I, I mean, you also have Willem Dafoe as uh, the scientist, Dr. Godwin, Mark Ruffalo, who I love in this movie. He's like the winking devil that's, uh, mm -hmm. that we love to watch. And then Rami Youssef is so charming all the time. So what's it like to assemble this kind of rock star cast? Is this when you're like, just, okay, your ghost, just get on the phone and call these people? Or or, or what's, what's the hardest thing about getting all these, you know, big stars together? I mean, uh, actors are very drawn to working with Yorgos, I think because his work is so kind of idiosyncratic and also because I think he often makes surprising choices. I mean, you know, I think, Mark is a good example. Like, you know, it's quite an unusual part for him and he's, you know, spectacularly good in it. Um, but also Yorgos is very, he's very kind of thoughtful about about cast and about thinking about who, who you know, about the ensemble and about the individuals. And I know it's something that um, Emma certainly had a, had, a, had a big input on. And also we have a great casting director, Dixie, Chassis, who based here in London, um, and she she was very much she worked also on the favor with the Orgos. Um, so it's sort of a lot of, you know, he's he's very well informed, like he's he's he sees a lot of stuff. And, you know, I guess the Rami is a really, you know, a really interesting example. You know, he's a, a guy from New Jersey, you know, of 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 um Egyptian background, but plays this posh young Englishman or sort of wannabe posh young Englishman brilliantly, which is I don't know, just a kind of uh, extraordinary kind of uh, joining of the dots, you know. Um, but it's it's sort of yeah, huge attention both to the kind of the specific and then how they all fit in with each other and what the ensemble looks like. And obviously Jared and Hannah Shagula and Catherine Hunter and you know all these other amazing people. And I mean, Yorgos is known as sort of this great visionary i know when you when you google him if you google google your most most films like some of the things that come up are like are weird I, like you know how the phrases uh finish themselves out in google what to you what was different about this film for you compared to his other films is it just i mean is it just a grander scale or what what for you stands out about this one compared to some of his others yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it is the scale, Denton, as you identified, because, I mean, I remember when he, you know, one of the first things I heard him say when he talked about this film is that he wanted to shoot in the style of a sort of 1940s Hollywood movie. And, um, you know, so 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 the ambition, but but also just the fact that we're shooting on stages, as Ed said, he, he always had never done that before. So that's that's been different. Um and but you know in in other ways um it's it's quite you know familiar i mean we you know we we work hard to try and make sure that the set feels as familiar as possible and as contained uh, as possible um 
and we try and ensure that we work with as many of the same people as, as possible. So Robbie Ryan, who shot it, for example, shot the favorite. And, um, you know, increasingly, that's just a really important part of, of the experience of working with Yorgos, that we have a kind of band of collaborators who he's comfortable with, who, who um, you know, are uh, are there for, for each and every film. So a lot of the people, a lot of the heads of the department work with on, on poor things we went on to work with on, Kinds of kindness, which we shot in New Orleans, um, you know, uh, after poor things. So, uh, so, but yeah, I, I think it's just the scale of the production and the fact that it was, it was all based on science stages was probably the, the key difference. And you talk about, you know, one of the biggest stresses is just waiting for audiences to see it. What was that like for you when you premiered in Venice and then won the Golden Lion Award, very prestigious. Um, so what, that had to be an exciting and overwhelming feeling for both of you. Yeah, well, it was. Um, it was. It was. It was. It was kind of also. It was. It was kind of a relief as well. You know, I mean, it's obviously it's great. You know, but it also it's just that the, that the film kind of landed um, and landed with audiences and and yeah, having those kind of back to back screenings in Venice and then Telluride, you kind of you sort of feel like it's connecting with people, which is obviously the most gratifying thing of all um and uh and you know seems to be connecting with 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 critics and obviously the next big moment for the film is you know when it goes out sort of in into into theatrical release uh on the 8th of december um so at each stage you know each step there's a kind of anxiety as to how how it how it does and how it's received but um but no it's 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 all it was also kind of weird obviously because you know, we didn't have the cast with us, um, you know, in those early days. And and that's strange because it was, a, as I said earlier, it was a very, you know, it was a very kind of convivial and um, it was a fun thing to do despite all the stresses and challenges. It was a really, you know, you know, it was a, it was a really lovely film to work on. And um, and so it was, felt like a bit sad that, you know, they weren't part of it, um, particularly Emma, but all of them, of course, you know, um, um, but then it also had a different dynamic because it meant that maybe the kind of heads of department could, you know, could take a bow as well in a way that sometimes they they may not get to. And obviously their work on this film is is so um, striking, you know. Um, I mean, see, it's the thing about Jorgis is sort of like he obviously is, you know, he is such a kind of an auteur, such an iconoclast, you know, such a kind of, as you said, sort of you know, described as a visionary. But also he's very trusting of his collaborators. So he 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 gives, you know, heads of department and and um obviously the cast and you know all the people around him, he he gives them a lot of space to do their thing as well. You know, he's really interested in um in allowing their kind of individual creative impulses to flourish and to be expressed. So it's sort of it is that makes it all quite, I think, um quite quite a joyful experience. Um I'm sorry, I've we're I've veered wildly off topic, off question. No, I completely yeah. agree with you that the I mean everything about this film is like another character. We talked about how great the acting is, but I mean from the production design to to just everything about the way it's filmed, there's so many things that you can get each time you view it. Um, Andrew, what about you when you saw that finished product for the first time and and kind of heard that reaction from the crowd? Oh, well, look, I mean, you know, th there's probably no better place to introduce a film like Poor Things in Venice because the crowds are just so famously up for it and and, and enthusiastic when they respond, um, you know, in the right way. So, I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, we had a whatever, it was a 10 minute standing ovation, I think. And yeah, as I'd said, it was poignant that the cast weren't there because they deserved to be there and and to, you know, to kind of take that that here you know feel the love in the room there was so much love in the room for the film and I was really struck there was a kind of a young kid who was standing near us and he was like shouting at your was maestro maestro you're a genius you're a genius I was just like wow you know like I'm impressed the kid is is so into it you know so um but then you know what what has been what, what was reassuring is that alluded to when we went to Telluride you know, very different audience. Um, and yet it if anything, the response is even better actually in Telluride. Right? And there was more laughs in the room, I felt, and and then Ditto in New York and then in London. So everywhere we've gone, it's just it's just played so well. It's it's and it has been really, you know, that's it's just so rewarding to know that 
you know, all that effort is connecting with so many people in, in different places. Uh, so fun. And I've seen it in much smaller screenings in Los Angeles and both times still applause still mm -hmm. people, you can hear the chatter after like what was what's that what's i mean there's just so much excitement around this film uh congratulations to both of you best of luck Thanks. all Thank of this you. upcoming award season stuff i have a feeling you're you're going to be doing pretty well across the board on, in a lot of categories so congratulations once again and thanks for chatting with Gold. thanks thank you thanks thank you very much thank you so much thank you.